started. But I very much um, dislike the silence. So when we get going, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask me any questions at any time. Now, somebody made a comment before about um, the chat that you can put, um, you can do chat. The trouble is I'm looking at the painting, so I can't see the live chat whilst I'm going. So if you want to ask me anything, please just unmute yourself and shout. We'll have a little chat and then maybe you can mute yourself back off. How do you unmute yourself normally? Uh, can you see a microphone? Um, no, I, no, I can't. I can see on the top left-hand corner. Something Mario, are you on a laptop? I'm it's on a mute, laptop. The yeah. mute button. It's a mute but button. it's the bottom left-hand corner then. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can see. Oh, oh, yes. oh I see. Something's bottom left-hand corner. It's got Claire Marshall then. It's got three little lines. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it says Claire Marshall there at the moment. Oh, it's if just you, beneath. You, no, it's just beneath your name. Um, if you hover, if you hover over the screen, Mari. Pardon? If you hover your cursor over the screen, there should be a little bar that comes up across the bottom, and it's got a microphone in the bottom left-hand corner. Bottom left-hand corner. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well all you do mute. is click on that. Right, you've muted yourself. Click on it again, and you'll unmute yourself. That's it. That's it. So now you can do it. So if you want to ask me a question at any time, once I get started, I will mute everybody. Um, but when I get, if you want to ask me anything, just unmute yourself and ask. You, you press, you press the microphone, ask yep. the question, and then we'll, yep. you, when you've answered the question, take mute it again. I've got the other. Yep. This technology, I'm not up to it. <laughs> it's the easiest way I've found of doing it because I, I can't monitor the chat at the same time as oh, as yeah. me. So. Makes sense. Yeah, and like I say, I will also um, make the picture that I'm working on big for everybody, so um, you should be able to follow that. Right, thank you. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, at the top right of my iPad, it's it's got the record, the red record button on. Is that normal? Is that just a default? That's because I'm recording it because you've asked for a recording to be able to watch. Ah, back. okay. I'll let you record it. Yeah, I've got it. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah it, I'm, right. because I'm the host, I'm recording it. Yeah, yeah, so sure. That's just I understand. I thought I was recording it as well for a minute. So you don't do a topless flamenco dance in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're spoiling all their fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can if you want, but the others will be able to see it. <laughs> I'm sure there's been some hilarious stuff on these Zoom meetings anyway. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, there yeah. are people who've forgotten that they're on camera and they've been having the meeting in the nude and all sorts of things I've seen. Yeah, clips of. yeah some, some <laughs> lawyer got he, he oh, had these filters on, on his screen and he, he looked like a cat or something. Oh, yeah. yes, I saw he that. He couldn't get rid of it, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Harvey's joined us now, but I can't see him. Can you hear us, Harvey? I can see <laughs> something. No, can't see him. No, never mind, you'll sort it out, I suppose. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get, get started in a in a second, but I'll just oh we've got we've got more people, Alan's just oh there's Alan. Hello. 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 Hello, Alan. Hello, Alan. Hello. Good to see you all. Yeah. Yeah, you. Oh. Okay. Oh, there's just a message from Pauline Fahi. She said she got the message on Zoom, but at the moment she can't get audio. So she got my chat, so she knows. So I'm going to okay. go, I'll go off quiet and see if I can help her by text. Yeah. Okay, she should have the audio. The only reason she might not is if she's got her uh, device on mute, you know, or silent. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by muting everybody. It's going to take me just a couple of seconds to go around and mute everybody and then um, unmute the camera that I'm going to be working from. So bear with me a second. Yeah. 
Right, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's turn that down. Can you still hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> Good. It's a trouble when you, you change things from one device to another. Right. Oh, poor old Harvey's just connecting to audio and I'm just about to mute him. Right, I think that's mute, mute. Right, I'll un... Okay, hello Harvey, I've just muted you, sorry. That's all right. Are we the only four on? No, there's no, 20 oh, of no. us. No, I see a load, load more here now. Okay. I'm just starting to mute everybody, Harvey, so that I can get started. Is that all right? That's fine. Okay. And then spotlight for everyone. You should all have the big picture now. Give me a thumbs up if you've got the big picture. Excellent. Right. This one here is up here just to give you an example of the sort of thing I'm going to do. It's a semi-abstract landscape. So I'm going to turn my laptop so you should still be able to see me and move over a little bit. But the idea is that you can see this, that's the, the point. So let me take that out. And I'm starting off here. Now, what I'm going to be using, the reason I've got a black background is because I'm going to put some textures on here for you. And if I put the textures on a white background, you won't really see what I'm doing. That is the only reason I've got a, a black background here. So um, I'm going to start off with some, some textures. Um, the first of the textures that I've got is this, it's a crystal mortar. Okay, so it's a, it's a texture medium, it's a Pebeo texture medium. And it's got like little pieces of mica and crystal in there. So when I put that on, and this is much easier when you're on a flat surface. See, it just sticks to the surface and gives you these interesting textures. Can you hear that texture as I put it across? Um, it just gives sort of surface, it's like um, grit or sand on your surface. But once that's dried, that dries really, really firm. So I've got a couple of different textures here. I've got that one. This one here is a sand texture gel. So same thing, but just a different consistency, different consistency of crunch. So I'm just gonna randomly put a few bits of this down. And you can, you can put these where you want throughout a picture. So we've got those. Then we have a modeling paste, studio modeling paste. And this is just a texture medium. So again, this one you can put on nice and smooth, or you can put on and create these little waves and patterns. This just gives you a different surface to paint on. Now, something else you can do with these. It's all here, but it's buried under my table. Okay, so what I've got here, this is a stencil. Um, you don't have to use a stencil. You can use a piece of ribbon. You can use a paper doily. And if I put that across there, you can see the texture that that creates. So it's just pressing it through this mask. Has anybody used um, masks and texture medium in this way before? If you have, unmute yourself and give me a shout. Silence. Okay, so the thing with these is you just need to make sure that you wipe the texture medium off them before you put them away. I might use that again later with some paint. Okay, now these take a while to dry. 
Um, something else that you can use is I've got here just a little bit of scrim. And again, this can be attached in and glued down. You can use PVA or you can use Mod Podge. I'm just using a little bit of that texture medium just to push that in. Now, all of this is just creating a surface for me to work on. Um, you don't have to do textures, but when you're doing abstract work, it just allows you to have slightly different things happen um, when you come to painting. Now, much as it would be lovely to sit and chat for an hour, it probably wouldn't be that exciting a demo if we waited for this to dry, because that's going to take about an hour. So, in true Blue Peter style, I'll swap it over for one I've done earlier. And I've just put um, more black gesso over the whole thing just to make it even. But you can still see that texture, can't you? You can see where I've had those texture mediums. I've got a, a leaf stuck into it here. I've got pieces of paper stuck on there. Um, I've got various bits of texture medium throughout this. Um, and that's a little bit bigger, so I'm just gonna pull you back a little bit so you can see the whole thing. There we go. So it's time to get started. To start off with, we just need to think about our background colours. This is just on a, a, a board and I'm going to start off by using my 30 millimetre brush and also I've got a, a two inch paddle brush. There's no rules on this, it's just whatever brushes you feel comfortable using. But part of the reason for the larger brushes is obviously I've got quite a a, a big board here and it's just about covering a little bit quicker. So I'm starting off, I think I want some pale blues going on here. So what I'm mixing here is I've got some fallow turquoise and some white and that's giving me this lovely very pale sort of sky blue colour. And I need to get some coverage. Hello, I have a person. Oh, they've gone. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Are you just joining us or have you got a question? No, just joining, sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. So I'm picking up bits of different colours. Um, so I've got my white, I've got my fallow turquoise and I've got some ultramarine. And that's where I'm starting with this. And I want this to be quite light, quite pale, because I want to have some sort of darker colours going across the middle. So I need something that is going to contrast against that. In fact, I may even take it almost down to white at the edges. Believe me, it won't stay white, but let's just work a little quicker. Just picking up my paddle brush now just to, to get some coverage. If you wanted to, you can see already how we're starting to get things showing through. So if you wanted to in an area, you don't have to put the paint all over. You can allow that background color to show through. The way I'm gonna work, I'm probably gonna cover things over and then re-reveal re them as well. Thanks. 
Let's have a bit more of my turquoise. What I don't want is for this to be too even in cut, you know, I want it to have a little bit of, of all of the different colours just showing through. My brush strokes are going in lots of different directions as well. I'm not trying to be too um, even. Again, it's about trying to give myself some, some variety. So um, instead of just doing them all left to right, I'm doing some up and down, some left to right. I keep moving my brush around. It's really difficult if you've never done abstract because we're kind of brought up proper, aren't we? We're brought up to um, tidy things up and it's quite difficult to do things like leave bits unpainted. So I've got a nice light area down here. So I'm echoing that with a nice light area at the top over here. Right. So I need to have a little think about this just for a second. Sort out my paints. Now the next bit I'm going to do is going to be with a mixture. I'm going to paint all over myself here. Um, I'm going to use my 30 mil brush for quite a lot of this painting. I'm also going to use this. Some of you might recognize it. It's a roller for evening out the wallpaper at the edges of a wallpaper. I shall use my palette knife. Now I've got a couple of other brushes here, just a, a round brush and another flat brush. I'll no doubt we'll use one or other of those at some point. But I'm starting with my flat brush. Now I have to, I'm talking, I'm waffling here a little bit because um, I need this to dry back a little bit. Um, so I'm going to pick up, I've got a colour here. This is called red gold. Uh, it's a bit like burnt sienna. I suppose that's the closest alternative. And um, let's just see what happens. And I love that sort of warm orangey colour against those blues. And you can see I've got the brush and the paint very dry. And this is where you start to see some of those textures coming through. And I'm not really thinking too hard. I think it's one of those things with abstracts. You kind of just have to go with the flow a little bit. So I quite like this kind of quite dynamic shape that I've got going on. Next thing I'm going to use is just a water bottle. It's just good old H2O. Can you see little bits of that just running? Because we don't want this to be too even, we need some bits to run the other way too. And I have in the past found myself starting a painting one way up and by the time I've finished, either deliberately or by accident, I've ended up working on it 
the other way up and you might find that you prefer it a different way around. Allowing that run to run a little bit. Let's put this back in. My easel is protesting. Now, whilst that paint is quite wet, the other thing that you can do is you can take, it's just an old J cloth, and smudge some bits in. I can dab into that paint and make patterns elsewhere. I've lifted some of the paint off there, which is fine. It's showing that dark color underneath. So if, I mean, I quite like this, this brush mark, but if you decided you didn't like it, you could then just come in and smudge it. pick up some of these bits and just give myself a real sort of loose texture from the cloth. I wonder if I can bring you in just a little bit. Will it let me? No. Oh, zoom, here we go. No, it's not letting me zoom in. Oh, I thought I might be able to take you in a little bit closer. Be nice if my easel stayed put though. There we go, is that better? You're back in the middle, there you go. So really what I'm gonna do from here is just gradually build these legs. Um, I've got a colour here, Naples yellow. I want to include some of that as well. And the first half of this demo, I presume John's popping around with a cup of tea about eight o'clock, is he, for a break? He's gone off to make the tea for later. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put this on with my roller, this a decorating roller. You could use a brayer. There's lots of things that you can use. You can use sponges to put this down. And I've just got the paint. You can see, let's bring that in a little bit. You can see that I've picked that paint up to get that, that texture. Because this is a board and this is a hard roller, it doesn't hug the um, surface, so we get lots of bits missed. And that's what makes this quite interesting. And where I've got the stronger texture, it will just sit on top of it. Just cleaned that down. And as we put each bit on, I'm just going to come into it. And in one way or another, I'm just going to manipulate it so it's not just plonked on the page. It's got to be part of it for a reason. Don't want to lose the textures I've actually got on the surface, but it's just about sometimes breaking those edges.
So as yet, I have no idea what this is going to be, how this is going to be and where it's going to be, but it's going to be something. And what I tend to find with these abstracts is that because we're predisposed to trying to create something, I do often end up with, you know, something that I can see that I can make a landscape out of it. So um, that's quite interesting. I want some sort of purpley colours in here. <clears throat> So I am mixing up, I'll show you what I'm doing. I've got some ultramarine there and I've got some magenta. And I also have a lot of mess already because that's just how I am. And I'm also picking up this color called toning gray. You can just see it on the tip of my brush there. And that's just not quite as bright as white, so it, it lightens things up a little bit in, in quite a nice way. I want to put some of this around in various places. Now who already sees a mountain range there? So in terms of choosing my colours, I've started off with that sort of light blue because I quite like that as a base colour. And the red gold and the Naples yellow contrast quite nicely with it. Um, and the, these sort of purples, I also think go quite nicely against that Naples yellow. So I'm just looking for things that are going to stand out against one another. Constantly looking at how that works. And what I try to do is I don't want to fill the whole thing. I'm just going to put a bit of that up there and then wash most of it out again. Again, I'm going to come back in. Just put that on the brush. Like the way that's that's run down into the middle there and at this stage like I say I'm not actually trying to do anything in particular somebody got a question no you're mesmerized or you've all gone off to watch EastEnders I think we're all mesmerized Denise <laughs> <laughs> I hope so I hope so it's a really liberating way of working because for a long time, it doesn't actually matter what happens. And you can keep building these layers and building them and building them. So I've just cleaned my brush and I'm just drying it down so it's not too wet. Again, I want to break some of these edges. Not all of them, but I don't want all of them to have that sort of distinct edge. I quite like this bit. Now I'm going to start messy early. So I've picked up my purple but I've added a little bit of water to it so it's a little bit runnier than it was. When getting paint to flick off a brush, it needs to be not quite so stiff as you would use to paint. Just coming down to a smaller brush here. Again, I can still pick up some of these colours and move them. Nice little dollop of colour there. 
for the first half of this, I have to be just a little bit careful because of how, how wet everything is. But if we take a, a little break and I can have a chat with you, then um, I might just grab my hairdryer so that when I do the second stage of this, I can be a bit rougher. I'm just coming back in, picking up some of my red gold. So I'm just picking up all these colors. I probably won't, other than, you know, putting in a bit more light and a bit more dark, I probably won't add a huge amount more color to this because I think there's probably enough color going on here. So just wetting my paint down a little bit. So truthfully, I'm playing. That's all I'm doing here. Now hopefully you could see with this how you could start off doing quite an interesting painting of um, something like um, bluebell woods or you know something like that, that you could take this in a slightly different direction. I quite like to see these as big landscapes. Um, although I do try very hard not to actually make them representational at the end. It's quite difficult to do though. Right, I'm just getting a little bit more white here. Start building some of that. So I've just got some white on the brush. Does anybody have any questions so far? Please feel free to jump in. I do find it quite bizarre that it's total silence here in my studio. Um, Denise? Yes. It's not so much of a, qu a question, it's an observation. Yep. Um, from what you're saying, you start off and you kind of play really for a start without yep. too much thinking. And then at, at some stage, you see a landscape coming to you from what you've got in front of you. You can do. I mean, maybe people could tell me differently. I mean, this this started out as, as you know, pretty random stuff. But I can almost see some distant hills going on here where we've got some lower, lower range hills and we might have some fields at the front. Yeah, that's the way my brain works. Um, that doesn't mean to say it should be made into that. Um, this one that I was showing you before, again, I could see fields and, and farms and various other things, but I decided not to take it to the point where it was a representational picture because I loved it as it was. Um, and it's sometimes quite difficult not to do that. You know, we kind of, that was my question, really. My question was, how do you stop yourself from overthinking in the first place? At the beginning? What you do is you, you go and have a cup of tea, you get your cup of tea and you sit back and you observe it. And before you decide that you're going to make it into mountains and a landscape. See, the thing is, you just have to look at it. And, and my view on it is I'm going to put obviously I'm going to put more detail through this this central belt. I've just turned around and looked at this on the screen and this is almost a reflection going on here. 
But if I put enough information that you can make that into a landscape, but you don't have to, then the idea of not completing it doesn't become an issue because if I can see things in it, you'd be able to see something in it, but you'd see something slightly different to me. Mm -hmm. So I think it becomes quite in exciting. Exciting, yeah. When you don't finish it. If you, if you tell everybody exactly what it is, they go, oh, that's exactly what it is. But if you don't tell them exactly, then they have to work a little bit. And it's quite nice when you have to work a little bit as a viewer, um, it makes it a, a little bit more interesting. Please. <clears throat> yes. And um, what I can see at the moment, you know, even if you left it as it is, I know you're going to do some more to it, but I can see like an um, autumn leaves, autumn trees. Oh, okay. Yes. So sort of on the, uh, on where the brown texture is on the right hand side, and then there's a line of more brown texture. As you say, it looks like a reflection. Yep. So that blue bit going across to the right hand side in the middle is to me water, but with yep. autumn trees at the top on a hillside and yep. an autumn tree at the front and then autumn trees on the left hand side. Because of the texture, it. the texture yeah. creates, you know, like autumn trees. Well, I have to say, I do use this roller for putting leaves on trees when I'm not doing abstract or when I'm not doing textured work. Just I just use this because it gives this amazing sort of broken mark. Um, and I need to find somebody who makes these and get them to brand some for me. <laughs> and I, think I, think in, I think in that top right hand corner, right in the distance, yeah, that kind of looks almost like gothic sort of buildings or something. To yeah, me, you know, it like could be a gothic people. castle, couldn't it? Yeah. So you can see even from this early stage where we've been, what, half an hour just flapping around with some colour to see what happens. You could then sit back at this stage and you could get very much so make this into a representational landscape. Um, I'm going to try avoiding it too far. But what I, my intention for tonight was, was that I would go halfway so that you could see the direction you can take, but that you can see that you don't have to. Um, there's things I like about this already. There's things I'm not so keen on. There's things that I want to, to mess up because I love the texture in this bit across there, but I think it's quite a big chunk. But that may be that later I put some, some lines across it or something. I quite like the sort of vertical nature of those runs. Might make a little bit more of that. Um, so you can see there's, you know, there, there isn't, it's a style of painting where there aren't any rules. And I quite like that little softness going on up there, but I want to... I don't want that white just to have a, a lump there. I want that to blend. And there isn't a reason yeah. I can give you as to why I want that to be the case. I just do. That looks like um, snow-capped mountains to me, that white bit you've just yeah. seen. All snow. Um, yeah. it, look, it looks like you've got an horizon there. I, it, there does seem to be one going across the middle here, doesn't there? I might need to break that because, again, it, it's about saying, do we want this to be that conventional? Um, I might add in on the next layer, once this is dried off, I might do some more runs. Um, I'm not quite sure I don't that bit kind of is a bit meh to me at the minute so I might come back in with a little bit more of my red gold I'm going to add a bit of yellow ochre into it as well don't tell anyone I'm using another colour will you <laughs> and if I've put some up there I need to put some somewhere else as well Now, I've tried to do those opposites so that they're definitely not going to be a reflection. But. That's better. See, that breaks that shape up. I know my brain does, is slightly strange and it works in a different way to some people.
Well, I just put my ultramarine down with, and I had a bit of um, the Naples yellow on my brush. So I've got a little bit of green showing up in places. So we've definitely got some abstract mountains going on. We've got some trees. We have a Gothic castle. And we have some background. So who up to this point would say they'd like to have a play with something like this? I'm definitely gonna have a go. Good, mm. excellent. Um, I very rarely use get... acrylics, but I'm going to now, so. Excellent, yeah. well, I'm sure you've got some. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was wondering, because I'm mostly painting watercolour, so, you know, I was thinking how uh, you could do, really let loose with watercolour. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You, you could really um, wet the page and just kind of give it a real sort of looseness to it. Um, you could I add need to waffle. Ash. Sorry? You could, could add gouache to it as well, if you're doing watercolour, because yeah. I use gouache quite a bit with my watercolours. And, um, okay. you know, you can, put that, you can put that on quite thick if you want to. Yes. Well, mm. something else yeah. that I do is I sometimes put um, watercolour down with a palette knife, which oh, I know nice. is not a conventional way of using watercolour, but I'm not a conventional girl. Uh -huh. bear, bear with me, I'll, I'll grab one and show you. Now, I did end up making this into a, a scene but this was lots of water, watercolour put down with a palette knife, um, lots of spray. And then when it dried, I kind of had a look to see what I could see and made a picture out of it. Mm. So absolutely, you can do this with watercolour. You don't have to take it to the point of having a landscape. You can leave it as the abstract. Yeah, I think I might have a go. <laughs> no, that definitely looks like a landscape to me. Yeah. That one did, yeah. But this this is kind of well, building one, on it, and, and I I want to try and avoid it being too landscapey, but I want elements in there that could be a landscape, so that you can make your own mind up about it. I absolutely love that mountain range bit where the you know you could either determine it's either snow covered mountains or it's clouds over the mountains. Yeah, but yeah, I absolutely. absolutely love that piece. That really is lovely. That is. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I don't mess it up later. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what I like as well, that like you did put that little bit of yellow ochre and then you matched it the other side. Well, the way you've put the white through it here and there, you've got it sort of those elements of light all the way through. And that Naples yeah. yellow, it sort of brings it all very light and, um, you know, sort of translucent in a way. That's partly what I have to deal with in the, in the sort of second half of the painting. I've got things I can be doing, which I will do in a minute, but I'm just trying to allow this to dry a little bit before I carry on. Um, you've got elements in there and I will be adding some more darks in here and probably some more brights um, because at the moment I don't feel it's got enough um, something. Um, and I, do, I, I am quite prone to putting dark lines across things um, and there'll be a bit of a, <gasps> which I normally hear when I'm in a room, but when it's on Zoom, you don't hear everybody reaction, reacting. So um, yeah, I miss that. I also would like to make a little bit more of the runs and having been pointed out my Gothic castle, I want to do something with that. Okay, so I'm mixing up just a dark here, which is ultramarine umber and a little touch just put a bit of the red back into it, but a little touch of a, a, a really dark green. I just want this really sort of dark colour. I'll be using more darks later. Now, I'm not going to make a castle, but what I'm going to do is put windows everywhere. So I'm just using the side of my brush to press to create these dark shapes. 
and I'm varying the colour slightly. But in order to do that, I've got to put these shapes elsewhere as well. And literally, I've got a small flat brush here and I'm just pressing the brush down. And we get this sort of printing effect with it. So I need again to change that to a different place as well. So what can be windows up there can be a sort of fence down here if you want to look at it in that way. But my next stage for this, at this point, is I just need to step back so I will disappear from you. But what I'm doing, it's, it's quite difficult because I'm actually sat right next to it, not in front of it, because obviously you wouldn't be able to see it if I were. Um, so I need to just get back a little bit so I can see what I'm looking at and make some decisions. Um, as to where I want to go with this. I think for the sort of first part, I quite like it. It looks a little darker on the screen than it does in reality, but that's okay. You get quite a good view of it from there, don't you? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Not depth in it actually. You could study it for quite a long time and see all sorts of shapes going forward and backwards into it. Yes, and and that's kind of part of the beauty of this of not finishing it. You know, if if you don't put all that detail in, then scale becomes personal. You know, is this a couple of stones here, or are they tower blocks? Do you know what I mean? It, it can be, yeah. the scale is up to you. Again, I'm just, I'm, I'm playing now, really. I've been playing since I started this, if I'm honest. Right, I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to put some, so I've just put some white on my roller. I shall smush a bit later. I've got to avoid messing up my mountains. Has somebody still got the microphone on with a television on in the background or something? Somebody has. Denise, can I just ask you what colour, when you did those little dark bits in there, yes. in the windows, what colour, did you mix some green in there, did you say? I did. I've got this colour. Um, I'm using um, Atelier Interactive paints and I've got this colour that looks like black but it's actually called green black. And it's like the very darkest shadows you get on a conifer, on a, on a pine tree. Okay. Um, it's this one here, it's called green, green, green black. black. Um, and it's, it is, when you mix it with anything else, you do see more of the green, but on its own, it does look very, very dark. Um, but it's quite a good mixer. It's quite a good shadow colour, and I'm going to be putting more darks into it in a minute. Um, but it's also quite a good colour. If you mix it with something like alizarin, 
you get almost black. So it's a really nice one for that. Thank you. Denise, what are you using for your palettes? You know, those, they look like yeah. almost like uh, margarine club lids. <laughs> yeah, now what they are is you get this and the lid. So those just go together. Yeah. And it becomes an airtight container to keep your acrylics in. All right. Um, and it also comes with the actual water pot. And the pot that got my water in. And um, it's called, and I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's, it's widely available. It's called a deluxe brush bath. All right. And it, it stops your paints going dry so quickly because it's an airtight container. Um, and with the Atelier Interactive paint, some of this paint has been in here months and it's beginning to stiffen up, but some of it's been here months and it's still perfectly fine. But what I could do, for example, with that yellow, is if I just put some water on it, that will come back to life. And that's one of the properties of the interactive acrylic. Um, you can reactivate it. So those of you who use acrylic, has anybody ever used the interactive? No. It's, an, it's called an open acrylic. So if you've used, I think Windsor and Newton have an open acrylic. Um, but it just means instead of getting a skin on it, it dries a bit slower. It, it thickens rather than forms the skin. And Denise, what did you say that palette thing was called? <laughs> it's called a deluxe brush bath. Oh, do you know who makes them? I don't, but I know you can get them through the SAA. You can get them through Jackson's. Um, the, the code for it on all of the sites I've ever seen it is C-A-B-B. -B. Oh, thank you. That's the product code that if you put, if you went, say, to the SAA site and put C-A-B-B -B in, you should get it up. Thank you. But I use it quite a lot. I'm thinking here, I want some, some more darks to come through here. I haven't used this yet, so I want to have a, have a little play with this. So I'm gonna mix my green black with some of my red gold. I'm not mixing it terribly well, I want it to be um, a bit of this and a bit of that. Now, if you did want to make it representational, using something like a palette knife, you can make some lovely conifers and pine trees just by dabbing down with that. Do you think there's room in the market for an abstract Bob Ross? <laughs> well, I've got a bit of my blues and purples on the palette knife as well here. So can you see how adding that extra dark makes it look completely different? So I'm coming back in with my brush and I've got quite a lot of water on this. So I want that to move a little bit. So I'm wiggling that.
And part of the reason for me liking the, the runs is because it stops me. It kind of is one of those things that can sort of help you to not get too involved in the representational stuff. And I can scrape back into it. Now I've got bits of paper here which are kind of moving a little bit. They'll be fine once they dry, but for now they're moving. How do you know when to stop the news then? Well, what you do is you look at the clock and you see it's time for a cuppa mm -hmm. and a chat. So you mm. then let it dry off a bit and then you come back. There isn't really a right or a wrong time to stop. At the moment, this is getting quite representational. So I am tempted to do something quite radical after the break just to stop it being quite so like a landscape. I like it as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I was asked to do something abstract. <laughs> it's, well, it's definitely an abstract landscape, that's for sure. I say it definitely is abstract. It's just that you can you can see different things in it. Yeah. I mean, so the, top like part, the top part of it looks like an oriental painting, which I love. Uh, yeah. But then, then the rest of it still looks like autumn trees mixed in with like... Um, Cypress, uh, is it cypress trees or whatever they call Yes, them? I know the ones you mean. Yeah, those, um, those very tall. With a little cypress. bit of water and maybe some people. And, you know, so there's lots of stuff in there without it being totally representational. Denise, what colour is that you're using now? That one I'm putting is, is a bit of a magenta. I just wanted yeah. to brighten things up a little bit. And do you usually paint on wooden boards? I paint on paper, on wooden boards, on canvases, on um, whatever I can get my hands on, really. I quite like the way that's running through there and lifting back to those previous colours. Now that colour was, let me find it. Hiding, that's what that colour was. Here we go. It's a quinacridone magenta, mm. that one. These paints, they come in series, so they're artist quality paints. Um, but I don't think they're, they're particularly expensive. They start at about five pounds uh, for an 80 mil tube and the series do go up to about 15 pounds, but I would say 90% of them are um, under 10 pounds, which for, you know, you can see it's quite a decent sized tube, um, an artist quality paint. I don't think that's too bad at all. But the interactive is available through the SAA. Not sure it is widely available elsewhere. Right, I think I need to go and grab my hairdryer. So if you all want to unmute yourselves and have a chat for five minutes, I need to dry this off um, before I come back in. And it is turning itself into a landscape, isn't it? But not too detailed. Mm -hmm. See, I think we, we've got a case for a nice, water's edge and we could if we really want to make it into a representation thing you could put somebody in a canoe on the on the water so what i'm going to do want to grab a, a cuppa or a biscuit or if somebody's coming around with a tray that'd be fine yes, it's <laughs> just thank <you>, john <laughs> it's just turned up <laughs> oh good good um Whilst I just give this a, a, a little blast, um, I'm going to take this off uh, spotlight. 
so you should be able to see one another you can still see it but you should be able to see one another for a chat um and i'm just going to get the hair dry so i think that looks really lovely as it is mm. yeah It's, I mean, it, it's, it's look sort of it goes in and out, doesn't it? Through various yeah. stages, you know, I've liked it and then it sort of goes away and then, and then I like it again, you know, it's, it's changing so rapidly. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Right, I'm going to mute myself because you don't need to hear the hairdryer. <laughs> it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> 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 ah, but we're watching for a different reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Must admit, I can't get my head round um, abstract painting. I wouldn't have a clue. I don't know what I'm looking at when I look at abstract paintings, and I kind of wonder why I would. Um, so this is uh, hopefully all going to be broadening my education a little bit. I think sometimes the idea of most abstracts is that you see something in there yourself. You know, you, you look at it quite a little while and see different things rather than it necessarily being a particular thing and you have to see that in it. Yeah, but I guess you, it needs to have something that makes you pause for more than two seconds. Because mostly when you go to galleries, yeah. quite often you walk by a lot of stuff. You just don't look at it because there's nothing there that grabs your attention. No. Um, and I just mm -hmm. kind of wonder in an abstract sense, apart from, I don't know, colour range, saturation, uh, tonal values that kick out and how the colours interplay between each other that are going to make it something that pleases your own particular sensibilities. And I must admit, with most... Um, abstracts I've not found that yet. I think there's quite a few abstracts I've seen that I really do like I mean we've although most of our paintings in the house are traditional ones we've actually got an abstract and it's one that both of us fell in love with hmm. but it doesn't necessarily represent anything in particular but it's just the colours and the way that the, the tonal values and that worked just really appealed to both of us. Sure. And I think, I think I, that's I, the old day I think that's the idea of an abstract is that um you know, you see, as you say, it draws you in. You, you look at it and you can, you're not quite sure sometimes what you're seeing, but you like what you see. <laughs> yeah, I went on a on an abstract workshop. Oh, yeah. And really did find it liberating. I haven't oh, right. done anything since, but after watching Denise, I'm definitely going to have another go. Yeah, I think that's lovely what she's done there. Yeah. I'm going to have a go as well. Absolutely nothing in the bottom left-hand corner yet. What's she going to put there? I don't know. Probably nothing. You never know. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see an elephant, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Painted in fine detail, Alan, I suppose. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All every hair to be seen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm, I'm, I'm just an old traditionalist. It's uh, a realist, which... Um, I can't get away from, although I have tried. I've, I've looked well, at loads of abstract stuff. That's how I felt at first, Alan. And I just, I just don't get it. Yeah, the, the um, acrylics were, I mean, abstracts were doing nothing for me. And so that day I have went on that workshop. It was with Sonia Bacchus. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, she's not really, she doesn't really do a lot of, of abstracts. You don't see much of her work as abstracts, but um, you know, that day it was really interesting and I really enjoyed it. So I shall have another go. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's like me with my watercolour flowers. I mean, they're really quite detailed. Um, and yet when I started doing my encaustic wax pictures, they're like, they're like semi-abstract ones because they're of yeah. nowhere in particular. And sometimes the colours I use are nothing actually like a real landscape, but it's just, I think they're quite evocative, the, you know, the way that the wax goes down on the card. So Yeah, I like 
I love I like, them. like that, yeah. With your wax, wax drawings wax. and wax. Yeah. yeah. It's Pauline. Oh, if anybody wants to have a go at lands, uh, abstracts, I've got a lot here. Denise, you've got yourself on mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, it's Pauline that was talking. Sorry, no, Denise. Right. Denise yeah, I said I, I could see from, from your hair dryer. I could see Denise I'm was not... talking, and I couldn't hear what she was saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pauline. I'm going to give you my phone. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, we can see it, Pauline. It's lovely. So oh. I've got loads of big ones. Anybody wants to have a go in my workshop, they're welcome. Yes, I'm sick of you do read really quite big ones, don't you? They're huge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm painting my done. workshop out at the moment, but if anybody wants to have a go, they're welcome. Lovely, oh, thank right. you. I'm intrigued on to actually the, how light the actual picture is. Because I've got it on my laptop, but I've also got it feed, fed through to my television, and the two pictures are totally different. The colour I can see on the screen is, is different from what I can see um, in reality. So what I'll have to do, um, I've got to send you through the, the link for the recording um, afterwards. I'll, I'll take a photograph of it in daylight tomorrow and send that through to you as well, if you like. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I feel it. this it's is insane. getting a bit too much like a picture. <laughs> Damn. We <laughs> <laughs> like it. You're going to do to it. As if we wanted a picture. <laughs> I, think, I think, Denise, when you do something to it to change it from that, everybody is going to go, oh. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the thing, thing that I quite like is the play aspect of it because yeah. it frees you up from that kind of, oh, is, does it, is the perspective right? Is this right? Is that wrong? Right, it just, yeah. it's still right from your heart. And what comes out of it is a surprise. Yep. It doesn't completely. matter. You it's got to, it hasn't got to be any, anything exactly no. real. It hasn't. But it's if you wanted, freedom. you were talking about flowers and elephants. If you wanted to start with a background like this, probably not as much strength of colour in the centre as I've got here, but if you wanted to start with a background like this and then put your elephant on top of it, there's nothing to stop you doing that, but it, it gives you a very loose textured background. Then you can paint as detailed as you want. If you wanted to develop this to a full blown landscape with individual trees and houses and people on the, on the banks, that's fine. You can do that. But how quickly did we get here? Yeah. Mind you, I've, I've liked every stage of it. You know, oh, I think, right. oh no, leave it like that. That looks lovely. But then you've <laughs> added something else and then, oh, that looks nice as well. So yeah. yeah. You see, you see something different at every stage, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, I quite like the sort of strong marks that you get from the texture, but I also want to blend some of these a little bit. The sort of purple, white, that dark green, I think is a bit too hard. So this is what I'm sitting here looking and thinking and debating with myself seeing as nobody bought me any biscuits. I'll have to come and visit. I've been to see you a few times before, haven't I, down in Peterborough? Yeah. I think you have, yes. Yeah. 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 But I think that was when I lived in Hertfordshire. I now live in Norfolk, but it's kind of just coming from a different side. So, yeah, there's certain things that I really like. There's a little patch here that I don't know if you can see, but I just like the way the texture's gone on that. The, the paint has gone down. Mm. Let's bring that in. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Can you see how um, the end of that stripe there? Uh, got a couple of people there. <laughs> yeah, but again, you can look at it. If you if you kind of zoom in like this, you can take a section of it, and it's a different painting entirely. Yeah. Uh, it is, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. then you look at another section. Look, there's a clown's face there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got over here? I quite like that sort of wilderness forest that's going on in that corner down there. And you can yeah, see the, really... the texture there too. Can't yeah, you? yeah, you really can. When you zoom in, you can really see the texture. Yeah. Yeah, it must look, must look good in, 
in real life as such. In 3D. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Because you build, you build it up to whatever degree you want to, really. You make it almost like a sculpt, you know, sculptural. Yeah, it's like a sculpture. Mm. I was yeah, thinking you... that as you were building it up. It's like when you were doing with the the, uh, the different uh, the roller thing and everything. I was thinking this is rather like when you get a bit of clay and you sculpt, you know, you shape it as you go along. And yeah, yeah. I've got a roller like that, and I know what it's for now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my husband thinks we've got one in the decorating box, but we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Yes. <laughs> Not now. Yes, as water, but yes, I thought we had one. Hmm. Okay. Not playing then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what I like about the, the roller is is the fact that it's this kind of hard mm. surface. So a sponge would kind of fill in all the cracks, fill in all the gaps, but this rides over the top of them rather than, you know, sinking into it. And that's why I quite like. A brayer, if, you, if you've ever done printing, like lino cutting or whatever, and you've got one of those rubber brayers, that, that would oh, work yeah. as well. Got a few of them. <laughs> yeah, they, they would work fine. But to be honest, there is, there is nothing that wouldn't work. It, there's nothing that's worth not worth trying. Um, mm. You know, you could roll a toilet roll middle through your paint and that would give you a texture. Yeah. Um, it, it's all worth having a go and, and seeing what yeah. you, you come up with. Just being brave enough, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is. It's, it's about not, um, caring. not worrying. Yeah. Well, it's not, not caring. I, I care that you have a good demonstration yeah. and I care that I get a good picture. That's, that's the wrong word. Um, but... What I don't want to do is give myself any preconceptions. Mm. I pulled something else out here earlier. If you're doing a landscape and you do end up wanting it to be a landscape, you can always take pieces of old maps that you can get book maps in, in charity shops these, well, when you're allowed back into charity shops, and you can put bits of a map of the area that you want to paint, which I think is quite interesting. So, you know, there's lots of different things you can play with. Yeah. So you could make a collage on top of that, couldn't you? Oh, it's yeah, like... absolutely. You, I yeah. put bits of newspaper into paintings. Yeah. Mm. Um, all sorts, really. I might put some newspaper into this. I don't know. I haven't kind of figured out how it's going to end because that's what it is. It's, we don't know yet. It's it it looks... I Lord of the Rings in that. Some yeah, news yeah, there was a... Lord epic New Zealand background, isn't there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I think if you look, this sort of thing, you can always almost use it as like wrapping paper. The pattern yeah. on the wrapping paper. Yes, you can do. Gift wrapping. It looks. Well, that would be some gift, wouldn't it? Huh. I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> you could see things like that on wrapping papers, couldn't you? Yes. Can you hear me still? Yes. Yeah. Only I'm going to put myself off boot now. Okay. Right. Are you ready for me to carry on? Yes. Yes. If you would like to mute yourselves, I'll put this back on pin spotlight for everyone. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to come back in with my stencil now. And I'm going to make up a bit more of my sort of purpley colour, but I'm adding some grey to it. So it's a very pale purple this time. Where should we put some of this? Can you see my little shapes there that I'm making? I'm just using it literally as a stencil. I think we're getting too representational, so I'm going away from that a little bit.
Somebody was worried I had nothing in this corner. I don't really want a lot down here. Okay, I'm coming back to my brush. I didn't really like that sort of transition. I thought that was a bit too, too sharp there. So I'm coming back in and I'm gonna mix my red gold with my Naples yellow and a little bit of that magenta. I want this sort of peachy color. So I'm gonna put that in with one brush and then I've got another brush. And I'm gonna stretch that out. Now I've got kind of my background dry, I can be a bit more brutal when it comes to sort of rubbing colours back. Pick up a little more of my magenta. And I quite like that stripe going across there. So pull my brush and get rid of quite a lot of it. The thing with, with abstract painting, um, is that there isn't, there are rules, there are things that work and there are things that don't work. Um, but truthfully, if you get to a point where you think, crikey, I've overdone this, I've way overdone this, then you just paint back into it. You know, you can, you can just take it back to another level. Um, you can have soft transitions of beautiful soft transitions in the pictures we saw on whoever's wall that was that we had a look at. So, can't remember whose wall that was, sorry. We had some lovely soft transitions. I've got quite strong sort of jumps between color. I like that better now, it's not such a big shape. Now, something I haven't used much of for a while is the ultramarine and the, the turquoise that I started off with. So I'm going to start bringing some of those back in. Just little flashes of these blues. This phthalo turquoise is an incredible colour that I have in my, my background. And I'm using the side of the brush just to catch on those textures. I'll bring that back across to you in a minute so you can see those, the way that's kind of rubbed on the bits of thing that are stuck in the picture. I like sitting and watching the dribbles happen. I also like it when they go upside down. See, doesn't it look different when you turn it upside down? So let's have some turquoise and my magenta.
So I want them, but I don't necessarily need them going all the way up. Up here, my background has got a bit scratchy. I had my paint a little bit dilute, so I need to do something with that. I can't see that far up, Denise. Oh, sorry. Hang on. There we go. Remind me to bring it back down if I don't. <laughs> Thank you. Up here, my paint was a bit thin on the on the board, so I could see sort of the brush marks from that first layer a bit too much. And everybody I've ever seen do abstract work does it their own way. They do it slightly different. And as far as I'm concerned, that's okay. You know, you say it's an abstract, um, but it does seem to have an up, uh, seem to have a right way up. Yeah. It was really abstract. It, would, it presumably would look, you wouldn't be able to tell what was the top and what was the bottom, would you? Well, your definitely looks like well, the way you've got it to me is the right way up. Yeah, that's because we've ended up, it, it's kind of headed towards a bit of a landscape, and therefore, yeah. a landscape does have, have a, an up and a down. Yeah. Um, if you went completely abstract, it wouldn't really matter. Um, yeah. But in, even an abstract, though, that is completely abstract, that doesn't have any representational characteristics to it that is literally just a pure pleasure and enjoyment of the colors and, and the textures that you've got there still has the right way up um, and yeah. you look I, at I, it I, and yeah. you kind of go that's wrong mm. yeah because so, yeah, i'm an i tend to draw things as i see you know like with my eyes yep. it, but i do i do love this i mean i just because i can read i can read so many things into it well, that to me is part of the beauty of not being too descriptive with it, is to not fill in the gaps. Um, because then you might not, you, what you saw in it might disappear. Um, I don't want to say that this is definitely a landscape. To me, this is heading for a landscape, so it's, it's difficult to say it's not. But, you know, to me, the whole of this thing is about this central core, I don't really want to put too much information top and bottom. I like the fact I've got some runs that go through that, but some that stop. I'm not sure whether I've got too many at the bottom now. Um, and I also want to come back across some of them in the middle. So that's kind of where my, my thinking is. What I might do, let me see if I can do this without <laughs> destroying where I'm working. If only you could see when we do these Zoom workshops, how we have to set everything up. It's hilarious trying to actually work around having a computer, a la an iPad, and all your tape and everything, and sitting next to what you're doing. It's um, it's quite ent entertaining. Mm. Right. What I've got here is I've got some newspaper. I'm just going to tear it into some strips. I haven't read it, but you can. The residents of Stamford Hill, aged 77. That's what this painting can be called. So I'm going to bring in some paint. Uh, paint is basically glue with colour in it. So wherever you 
paint under and over, it will stick down. Now, obviously you can do this with um, PVA or something as well, that's fine. So what I have to do is find bits that I would like to add to that are a bit bland. And what I want is that you don't notice that there's bits of newspaper in there until you really look closely at it. Now going back to conventionality, I've put all of those pieces of newspaper the right way up so you can read them. Isn't that weird? And the other thing that this does for me now is these become ripples on the water. Do you see that? Right, what have I just covered over that you all wanted to stay, leave staying there? And what have I not covered over that you go, that could do with a bit of something on it? My autumn trees disappeared. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right, it actually looks all right because it looks as though there's a, a different colour tree there with a reflection of some water, so. There you go. That's what happens though. And again, you know, I quite like doing these uh, in demos because I'm not sitting next to it. When you're sitting in front of it, the temptation really is to, to make it a semi-abstract landscape as opposed to an abstract painting. And we've ended up with a semi-abstract landscape rather than a complete abstract. But that's OK. That's OK. We can we can that, do that. That's actually what we asked for was a semi-abstract landscape. There you go. Well, that's what we've, we've ended up <laughs> that's with. That's what we've done, yeah. I think because it's ended up more landscape than anything else, I am going to put a few more sort of details into it. Um, but I'm still going to play. I don't like these that I put down here. didn't like that little little patch there again sometimes you can't really determine as to why you don't like something it's just when you sort of sit back a little bit you kind of go mm. right semi-abstract landscape becoming lands more landscapey I'm coming back to what I had before and using the brush as a printing tool with my dark green Picking up some of my magenta, some of my red gold. Right, before I kind of come into details, there is something I just want to do. I want to make up some dark, so I've got my red gold and my green black and a little bit of ultramarine. So what I've got is this rich dark colour here. And with my, my roller, 
I'm trying to get it just onto one edge of the roller. So I'm just turning my roller around. I don't want this to be my water's edge line. I'm going to have two or three versions of this. Need some more colour. Deliberately making these a bit wavy. Does that give me a bit of the water's edge? Clean the brush down a little bit. Just using my tissue here to smush a bit. all on the floor don't panic the chair's just fallen apart pushing around with a little bit of water See, look, the chair really did fall apart. Bits are coming off it. Okay, so if we're going to pull this together as a, a semi-abstract landscape, we just need to then work into it to make it into the landscape. So, It's a bit of push and pull. Very gently, just lightening a bit behind those trees so they stand out a bit more. Can you zoom in so we can see what the uh, newspaper parts look like? Absolutely. <laughs> find you a bit can you just see in the middle there you can just see that texture that sort of the writing as a line compassionate can you read that yeah you can see it under something wasn't it yeah yeah so oh, yeah yeah i Thank don't you. want it to, to be such that you really see it but you know i know that when you look at it you can go oh i didn't notice that before Right, coming back to my dark. So we're making the trees at the top of these hills. And I'm just taking some water and washing away at the bottom. So just sort of fade down. And I think part of this, for me, this bit hasn't got much detail in it. And that's partly because it's on the other side of the canvas from where I am and all the stuff I've got in front of me. I will do my best to get some stuff across here. We've kind of lost our Gothic um, tower, haven't we? I think we need to try and bring our castle back. I quite like Most that. Most of it's still there. I think it just looks as though it's like in the mist. 
Yeah, I, I again, I don't want to make it distinct, but I would like to be able to see it if we're going semi-abstract landscape. But isn't it a fun way to start a landscape without having to have any, any worries or stress? Right, let me come back in and make more of that purpley grey colour. I like the fact that you can sort of, you, you've got no preconceived ideas about what it is you're going to do. You just wait to see what emerges, really. I've got no reference photographs, so I can't go wrong. It's basically what it boils down to. Mm. Get a little more paint out. That noise was the paint, honestly. So ultramarine, magenta, and my toning grey. That toning grey is another lovely colour. It's, it's this one in the corner here. Um, and it lightens things, but it's because it's not white, it doesn't white lighten them brightly, if you know what I mean. It gives you more of a sort of softer. I think I could go a little darker. And what I'm going to do is put some a little bit more light behind it. I don't want to lose all those runs. That was the, the, the point of this was I don't want to lose those. But I do want to make it a bit more visible. I've got a leaf stuck into my picture up here, which is quite interesting. But I'm not going to cover over that part of the run. I'm just covering over the bit that's right next to our tower. It's going to have changed shape a little bit. Hopefully, it's not too obvious, but again, it's, it's the shape of something that your mind is going to make into a building. Back to my dark that I was using for the greens. And I just want to have a few bits coming down this side. There's lots of texture here, so I'm not going to be able to get a smooth line here. And that's actually quite nice. Now where I roll with that dark mark on next to it, I just want to put a little bit of light using my flat brush. And it's just more ripples on the water really. Now you were talking earlier about um, a Zoom call with various odd things going on. If somebody came into my studio right now, they'd see me just talking to myself completely <laughs> randomly. Right, I need some help here now. I want to know what bits annoy you, what bits you like, what bits you want me to change and what you'd like me to add to it. It's your painting as much as mine. 
Anybody got anything they would like me to change, add, move, cover over? I think down in the left hand side, you know, you said the drips. Yeah. I'm not it's really sure. Yeah. There's something. Is there too many of them? I don't know. I mean, it's an individual preference, I would think, but just me looking at it, I, I think that's probably something that the drips at the bottom, but I'm not quite sure whether there's too many of them or what. Yeah, when you did that before, I think that kind of. Let's yeah. knock out one or two bits, but not the whole way up and down, yeah. just a few parts of it. Yeah, that's that's it because you've got one up in that you've got got one right up in the sky, or if it is a sky. Yeah. But yeah, that kind of yeah. Mirrors it. I'm not I quite sure what it sort of softened it a bit now, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the bottom section looks yeah. close, closer like a beach. Okay, this bit here. Yes. So we've got this sort of beachy bit coming in. Yes. So if we kind of bring that, we've got more of a beach there. Where you've but got like your, your natal's yellow that yep. comes like from almost the centre going down diagonally. That's it down yeah. there. That looks like a, a beachy path. Yeah. yeah. Fact, some, of the, some of those little um, dabs that you've done with the, the dark green, uh, yeah. they're almost like people. Oh, okay. They're looking yes. out from a distance, they're people walking along there. Which you're just covering up. <laughs> no, I'm not covering them up. I'm covering up next to them. They're there. They're still All right, there. okay. <laughs> yeah. Those bits. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're people, they make this a very big landscape. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. In fact, what we can do is now we've kind of got to this point, we can come back in. Again, I'm not going to make them all really obvious, but. Can have one or two of them that are a bit more obvious and if they're people should we give them heads no i don't think so no, they just... look like they look like people anyway because they're you know like, uh, sort of quite distant only really you need to put heads in really okay we'll leave them as they are again there's times where you kind of go oh well i've got too much of that and i just want to soften that down that's all I'm doing is just keep stepping back. I mean, obviously, I'm quite perfectly happy to do this by myself, but sometimes it's nice because you've got a different perspective on, on it than I have. And, and sometimes people go, well, that, I wish you'd just cover over that little bit there because that's really annoying me. And it can make all the difference in the world. My favourite bit is the, the bit from the, the centre left to about halfway across or about a third of the way across the colours where you've yep. got your, pur your purple on the left hand side and the red on the right yep. hand side. Yeah, um, that, bit that's, there. that bit is stunning. Thank it's, you. It uh, looks really lovely. The more I look at it, the more I like that bit. Because for me, it's, it is a landscape, but it is still semi abstract because there's nothing totally definitive. It's no, what your eye sees. There's nothing to hang your hat on, really, is there? But no. you know that it's got lots of landscape elements in it. Um, but there's there's not a... I mean, it would be quite easy. I, I'm going to put this in and I'll take it out again. But it would be quite easy. You know, we could up here, we could have a little cottage on the shore. I don't want that in this, but, you know, that yeah. you could quite easily put something like that along the shoreline. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you could actually put a sailing boat in the in it, in a very you small could, bit in the foreground. You could put a silhouette of something yeah. like that. You could yeah. put, yeah, you could put a couple of sailboats in. Yeah. I'm not one for um, putting, you know, you do a landscape and people say, oh, why don't you put a seagull in there? I do a lot of seascapes, you know, you get the, why don't you put some seagulls in the picture? And, and I'm like, no you're all right thanks um <laughs> but you know it's it's that kind of thing this you can always do something to give it some scale now something i have noticed that i'm gonna i'm gonna play on can you see this lump here this sort of splash of white yeah 
Yeah. It's to me, it's the sun poking out behind the clouds. Oh, yeah. Once you say it, you see it, don't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I say, Denise, just where you're working there, just to the left of that is the sort of black vertical line. Yeah. Yeah. Now, because it's such a, um, you know, it's turned into such a landscape, really. I know it's sort of, it's got a lot of abstract quality about it, but I find that slightly, you know, in my, in the way my brain works, that looks sort of like I'm trying to sort of think, what is that? Should it be there? You know what I mean? Because it's But does it matter? Bottom. I mean, I've got grass in the... Um, yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. that particular one that's, it's so, it's the total it contrast. Very dominant. And again, I can always just break a part of it. Um, yeah, I don't know, but, mate. You know, I, I I, I'm sort of seeing do, it more of a... you you've then got to deal with all of the others. I suppose so, yeah. I'm, um, um, it's just I, the way I, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to leave it there. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I no, I know to... what you mean. I, what I'm going to do is, down on this bit, it's my one nod to, you know, putting in a seagull. <laughs> is I'm putting a bit of a reflection of that uh -huh. sun there. I don't want to take it any further than that. Oh, that looks nice. Uh -huh. Pull the ends of that out. I, all I've done here is just wash my brush out and dried it off a bit. So just pulling those ends out so they're not hard ends. That's also kind of broken a few more of those, yeah. those vertical stripes. But uh, Denise, yes, there, there's a little bit on the on the right hand side of the painting down at the bottom. Yeah. Um, in that corner, that part further over, further over that that part is so much that much, but it's so clear the if it is water yeah. and the reflection that in itself if you just cut, like cut that bit of the painting out it's like a painting <laughs> in itself isn't it yeah ab absolutely and and some days when I'm working like this it ends up there is no landscape whatsoever and it is just patches of color that you look at and you can see what you you want to see into it um right I'm not going to do the entire painting by committee but does that help having broken that let's lift you yeah. up so you can yeah, see it a little better. more Yes. So that's that's just broken that dark there. Don't want to get rid of it. Um, but it's not yeah. quite so stark. Yeah. yeah. All of this down here to me reflects everything that's yes, that's going on up there now. Okay, let me bring that into you because you can see there what I've done with the um, the castle. It's yep. not a castle, it's a smudgy shape. Mm -hmm. But you get back from it and you do read it a bit as a building. I've got, again, these people walking across the beach. Let's bring you back down a little bit. Oops, sorry, making you a bit seasick there. Um, that's, that's it. But these people here walking, walking along this beach, they're not there, but once you spot them, they are. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah. you could put shadows on them, you could put, you know, reflect, not, not, doing, not doing any of that. It's, they, they're just, they're in your mind. I did a, a painting, I've still got it here somewhere, of um, Lindisfarne. A few years ago and most people do Lindisfarne and you've got the same view it's kind of the front on view of, of the buildings um, and we pulled up in the car park and I'd say it's a good half a mile walk from the car park up to Lindisfarne to the actual buildings mm -hmm. and it was one of those misty old days and um, there was just this row of people walking across from the car park in the zigzag line so that's the view I've got of it people go is that Lindisfarne it doesn't look like I normally see it but to me it was perfect because it was like this pilgrimage of people walking um across from the across these fields across the sort of water meadows across to it so to me this has got a little bit of that that feel to it it's definitely a landscape now isn't it yeah 
but I like the fact that you can just see yeah, some, different, so many different elements in it where mm. you know the more you stare at a particular area the more you can see yeah and that was that came about because of those first few layers that we put down where we were putting color down we we put that texture down so when you draw your brush across or your roller across or your palette knife you end up with the paint hitting and missing um so you know again i think i should be able to show you this if i can bring the camera in um i'm talking about let's get the camera in the right place this bit here you can see the paint is is sort of hitting and missing on the on the paper and that's all down to those textures yeah mm. so you can clearly see the newspaper now You've got it in a, in a few yes. places. And when you look at it close up, it's, it's just a load of marks, really. Oh, and there we've got the people in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I think we need a couple of flashes of white in here. What do you think? Where would you put them? I'm tempted. I can give my roller a good clean. You know how I put those dark streaks in with the roller? I'm tempted to do the same with white. If I don't like it, I can take them out again. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you know this person on the bottom left hand corner? Yeah. And you say it's a reflection of what's above, like the sky. Yeah. Have you got any little purple bits at the bottom to make it look almost like a reflection? Well, I'm trying not to be too representational. It's supposed to be semi-abstract. I've got all of those colours in there. There are bits of purple. When I was stenciling with the um, the dot stencil, I did put some more purple down here, but then I didn't like it, so I took it out again. Well, well, somebody, somebody also said about that bottom left-hand corner looked like the sea and then the beach. Do, yeah, it's so we've got kind of a spit of land coming through here. Um, I've sort of got my reflection of the sun in the middle. I quite like those just little flashes of white. It looks as though um, there's like a little island in the middle of the water over there. Yes. Could be, couldn't it? They could be all my buildings looking at those. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to paint them in, as buildings. Again, let me let me bring them closer so you can see. But again, see, again I think I think it's because of you know what we see where some people might see buildings and other people won't. Yeah. Mm. See, if I if I put um, masts coming up from them, they could all be boats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm. So you could have white masts coming up throughout there, and you'll have a flotilla in the middle. I don't think boats would look quite right on there, though, because I think it's not it's that sort of a, a landscape, is it? No, it's it's uh, it's quite nice and calming that landscape. Yeah, you don't want people to have moved there. No. <laughs> it's ours it's for us to visit but it's certainly different isn't it I think it's lovely it's different Thank isn't you. it mm -hmm. yes well personally I don't think I want to do any more to it because I, I will look at it and I will have a have a live with it but I think if I do any more to that now it's going to become muddy yeah no, I think that I think that's lovely because I think there are lots of elements there where, you know, you can get half a dozen people looking at it and they'll all see something different in there. Yeah. Yes. It kind of what does it look like? Is it Scotland? Is it Canada? Is it Transylvania with our castle on the hill? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> New Zealand, it could be. Yes, yes, definitely. I think that's what makes it so interesting because so 
so many there are so many ways you could look at it and so many people variations that people different people would see yeah but it all came about because we didn't have a preconception of what we were going to do um it it was just see what happens yeah, because although we asked for a, a semi-abstract landscape, we were, hadn't, hadn't got any preconceived ideas of what type of landscape it was going to be, whereabouts it was going to be, you know, was it somewhere specific, which is what yeah. we didn't want. We wanted it to be just something random. Yes. Well, I'm glad you didn't know where it was, didn't ask for somewhere <laughs> specific, because I had no clue when I first started what was going to happen. <laughs> I think it's very nice. Thank I think you. it's lovely, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, main well, question then, have I inspired you to have a go at doing something similar? Yes, definitely. Yes, you certainly yeah. have, yes. Yeah. I was just gonna say, I think you've inspired quite a few of us to have a go at doing it. I mean, I've, I usually work in watercolours or in caustic wax. And okay. I've got a load, I've got a load of acrylics. I've got a great big tub full of them. Yeah. I've only used them maybe twice. Well, it's a good excuse to get them back out then, isn't it? Yep, yeah, it certainly yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can work like this with watercolours or with oils. I mean, it, there isn't a rule that says this has to be an acrylic technique. Oh, that's um, true, yeah. You know, mm. you, you could do the same thing. Can you imagine with oils how much longer you'd have for blending and and you'd have, you could have a much softer picture by, by having all the blending in there. You don't have to put the texture mediums down in the first place, but I quite like them because it, it makes the paint do things you don't expect. Yeah, yeah I love the textures actually. Mm. yeah i'm gonna have a go oh that's wonderful well a couple of things i want to tell you a couple of things that i'm involved in if i may um do you know have you any of you heard of artist demo days what with the saa you mean well it's, it's not actually part of the SA. it's it's six of us um, who um, got together at the beginning of lockdown and we've been doing free demos and short demos and things, you know, little techniques and tips um, on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, search for Artist Demo Days and you will find the community. It's myself, Sharon Hurst, Matthew Palmer, Jeremy Ford, Alison Hargreaves and Ali Board. So it's the six of us. Um, and we've been, like I say, supporting people who've lost their art clubs throughout. But I mean, hopefully things will be getting back to normal soon. And the other thing that I've got is myself and Sharon Hurst on over on YouTube. You don't have to join um, YouTube or anything. But if you are, if you do sign into YouTube, you can then subscribe and get the details. Is we've created something called the Travelling Brush Dippers. And it's Sharon and I having a natter about all things arty and um when we're allowed to again we're going to be going out and painting and filming us painting outside so it's going to be you know all oh, right yeah that sounds quite exciting because sharon hurst her, her style is obviously completely different to most of yours isn't it yes yeah very much so so yeah. the first episode has gone up and that's talking i i took part in sky arts landscape artist of the year this year um I didn't get anywhere, but I was, I was, I was there. Um, so the first episode is talking about that. And the second episode we're talking about Sharon has just had her first book published. So it's all about the process and how she came to be involved in that. Oh, um, right. Okay. So that's on YouTube and you just need to search for the traveling brush dippers. I'll certainly have a go at doing that. Yeah. Look at that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Denise. That's been really, really good. I mean, I, I'm certainly sort of really quite inspired about trying it. Um, and certainly with the textures on there as well, that's uh, something completely new for me. So yeah. okay. I should get myself some and try that. And yep. I'm, sure I'm sure everybody else has been really happy with the demonstration that it's had. Very yeah, happy. Thank, thank, you. Yeah. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just removing the spotlight so I can see you all now. I can see you again now. <laughs> um, Carol, is it you I've been emailing? 
It is, yes. Yeah, I will send all, I'll send the nasty thing through. I'll send the invoice through to you, but I will okay. also send the, the link to the um, recording and stuff like that. So Yes, because I know there's out. a few people couldn't join us tonight because they've got other things on. So, uh, yeah, um, I, well, you know, they'll be able to join in and have a look at it. So to be fair, I'll probably do it all in the morning, if that's yep, all right. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm off for probably a gin and tonic. I would say a cup of tea, but it's probably going to be a gin and tonic. Um, yeah, now how did you find your first Zoom demo? I thought Very it was good. really good. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very good. Wow. Good. I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> it's quite nice because you can get up quite close, can't you? Whereas in a room, you know, you can't always see exactly what somebody's doing. So I think yeah. it works quite well for the demos. Well, as well yeah. as that, although we usually have a camera there so that we can see to the side. Uh, what's yeah. going on a bit closer up but uh, usually then at break time everybody wants to go and have a look at the picture close up and sometimes yeah. you just don't get a chance to go and have a look at it either so uh, I have to say I miss being there in person yeah I miss uh, the yeah. Chat, uh, I think oh, all yeah. of us miss actually having the live demonstrations yeah, we do. yeah 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 we'll get back to it soon we'll get back yeah. to it soon <laughs> Yeah. Right, well, thank you very much thank then, anyway. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure I will see you all again soon. Yes, yeah. hopefully. Thanks a lot, Denise. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.